Hey there, my name's Josh Eisen, and I wanted to share my story with you. So about a year, year and a half ago, I had a small spot on my nose. I thought it was a pimple. I busted it, and it started to just, I guess, not really fester, but it wouldn't heal up. It was just there. No matter what I did, uh, I used, you know, Neosporin, uh, all this other stuff to try to, you know, get it to heal up and it wouldn't heal up. I let it go and I let it go. My wife, she kept telling me that it was something I needed to get checked, needed to get looked at, but there was a lot of fear there because I, I almost knew that it was skin cancer, but I didn't want to know if that makes any kind of sense. But it finally got to the point where I really couldn't ignore it anymore. Uh, my, my health was at risk. So I went, had a biopsy done, and sure enough, it came back as basal cell carcinoma. Now, while basal cell carcinoma is one of the most common types of skin cancer and one of the most curable uh, types of skin cancer, it is still a skin cancer, and it's expensive to, to get rid of. So me being a father of four children and being a... Uh, husband to a stay-at-home mom, which I'm very grateful for. It does uh, put a lot on me financially as far as my obligations and the stress that I'm currently under. I don't necessarily know how I'm going to pay for this surgery, but I know that I need it. And one of the best ways that I know how to get through this is to do something that I never thought I would do, which was rely on the kindness of perfect strangers. Now, aside from the stress, the fear, and everything else that I've got going on right now, just pertaining to the surgery itself, and, you know, I, I don't even know where it's going to go after that because... One of my main concerns is that not only is it here, but where else? Could I have it somewhere else in my body? Or, you know. And whenever I was there for my biopsy, they actually froze two other spots on my scalp. Uh, they said that was squ uh, squamous cell uh, carcinoma. So it's like, I'm doing a full body check in May. And I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know how much time I'm going to end up having to take off to the course. I just, I have a real bad feeling that 2023 may turn into, I pray that it doesn't. But regardless, this is dealing with this situation. And like I said, aside from the fear and the anxiety, just dealing with the carcinoma itself, the financial side of it, my family has to be taken care of. And I am the only one working. So, and I do have to take six to eight weeks off after surgery because they're talking like I'm going to have to have some reconstruction on the cartilage in my nose. I'm going to have to possibly have a forehead flat procedure done. Um, so I, I, I don't even know. There's just so much uncertainty right now. The last thing I need to do or have to do is worry about the financial aspect of this whole ordeal. So your contribution, your donation would be greatly appreciated. I'm not, I'm usually the one giving to people. I'm usually the one fixing things, but I can't fix this. And I have to rely on other people to fix it for me. And that's not something that I'm used to. So uh, while I humbly ask that if you can, I would greatly appreciate it. And I've spent the majority of my adult life paying it forward. Maybe not in any kind of grand amount, but any time that I'm able to help, I try to. Whether it be through physical, as far as helping do something, or financially, if I can give a little bit of money here or there. But I do appreciate it, and thank you for listening to my story. And if you can donate, please do. If you can't, I totally understand. And I just pray that God bless each and every one of you that's taken time to to see me this far into the story and to understand where I'm coming from. Thank you.